When you get your new digital AccuMeasure, it comes with a thumb drive, and on the thumb drive is the installation software. So your display should come up something like this. You want to click to open the thumb drive folder. You want to navigate to the software folder, and we'll see the setup programs in here. The next thing you want to do is click the setup.exe, and that will install your digital AccuMeasure software on your laptop. This takes a few minutes. Hit next. Uh, we select the digital AccuMeasure folder to put it in. And next. This portion does take a, a minute or so to do, depending on the speed of your computer. And then we close our installation program. Okay, once we have our software installed, uh, the next thing we want to do is get our digital AccuMeasure ready to communicate with the computer. So, um, there's two ways to communicate. We can either use USB connection or Ethernet. Today we're talking about the Ethernet connection. Make sure your connection switch is flipped to the left, which is the Ethernet connection. And we will connect a Ethernet RG45 cable to the digital AccuMeasure. Uh, at this point we can apply power if we wish. So I'm going to plug in our power supply to apply power. We don't have the probes hooked up at this point. We just want to communicate with the unit. And we're going to take the other side of our Ethernet cable and plug it into our computer in preparation for configuring the software. So at this point, we're done with our hardware connections. And the next thing we want to do is establish uh, communication between our PC and the digital AccuMeasure. OK. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the control panel. So we click on our start button. In this case, I'm using Windows 7, but you can also use XP and Windows 8. So once we start up our control, uh, I'm sorry, once we hit the start button, we're going to click control panel. And then in control panel, we're going to want to select network and internet devices, and then network and sharing center and then change adapter settings. What we're doing here is we're configuring our local area network for a static IP address and that allows our uh, local area network connection, our Ethernet connection in our computer to communicate with the digital AccuMeasure. The next thing we want to do is select local area connection and once we brought the local area connection status window up we're going to click properties. Under Properties, we're going to select Internet Protocol version TCP IP, IPv4. You don't want to select IPv6. You want to select IPv4. Typically, when you start, your computer will have uh, obtained an IP address automatically. And we want to change that to use the following IP address. So we click that button. And the next thing we're going to do is type in the static IP address of the digital AccuMeasure, which is 192.168.168.247. To communicate with it, we're going to set an address that's not exactly the same, but within 100 of that. And typically, we pick an address that's uh, one away. So what we'll do is select this first window right here. We're going to type 192.168. 168, uh, we'll pick 249 today. Could have been 248 or 249 or even 250. As long as you're more than one address away from the digital AccuMeasure default address. Once we've done that, we just move down into the subnet mask region and click on it. And that will automatically come up with 255.255.255. .255 .255. At this point, we're all set. We would then just click OK, OK, and we're going to close this window here. 
The next thing we're going to do, uh, we've got a shortcut on the desktop here for AccuMeasure Basic Support, or you could go to the Start window and do the same thing. In this case, I'm going to select the Digital AccuMeasure. The next thing we want to do is scan for units. Uh, we're going to let the program actually find the hardware address in the digital AccuMeasure. So we click on the Scan for Units button over here, and within a short period of time up in this window, we should see the static IP address of the digital AccuMeasure. And as I mentioned, in, as you can find in the software manual and the hardware manual, the uh, standard uh, IP address uh, that the com digital AccuMeasure comes with. You can change this eventually. Um, it can also be a DHCP uh, address assigned by your network if you so choose. But today, for simplicity, we just want to talk between the computer and the digital AccuMeasure to keep things simple. So, once we've discovered this address on our network, the next thing we want to do is connect to it so we can actually talk to the digital AccuMeasure and configure it. So I've pressed the connect button and you can see the rest of the screen is filled out now. And it's, uh, we can see the MAC address. Every digital AccuMeasure is unique, has its own media access code. Um, we also can see a few other um, items that are associated with the digital AccuMeasure, such as the model number. This is a two-channel unit. It's a D200. Uh, we can also see the firmware and hardware revisions. And we can see the active IP address down here, which is 192.168.168.247. As I mentioned before, we can actually dynamically set this if you're on a, a company network. Uh, again, we're, for the time being, we will work with just a static IP address. Next, we'll be setting up uh, our initial settings to be able to talk to the digital AccuMeasure, configure filter settings, the sample rate, and actually take some measurements. Okay. We've gone ahead and fixtured our probe in this digital micrometer. It's the MTI KDCH 4D, uh, which allows us to read the gap with this Minitoyo micrometer head, and we can simultaneously read the uh, digital displacement from our digital AccuMeasure. Uh, as you recall, we're just using channel 2 right now, and I want to point out that we have two displays that are significant in, while we're moving this platen back and forth. One is the actual digital displacement. Uh, we're showing 100 microns here, uh, which corresponds to 100 microns on our digital micrometer, and we're also showing a voltage. The voltage here is, is essentially proportional to the counts from the probe. It's not to be relied upon for making a measurement. It's only really useful for relative reading, and rather than display encoder counts or analog to digital converter counts, we decided to turn it into a voltage because it's easier to relate to. But uh, do not use that for making precise measurements. Um, if we go back and we look at our information page here. Uh, as we pointed out before, this is a 250 micron range probe. We go to user settings, we see that we have a 2x range extension on it. So 2 times 250 is 500 micron range. We go back to probe setup. If we back our micrometer out to 500 microns, we should see a proportional change with our digital AccuMeasure and the probe here. Okay, we're now at 500 microns. We're reading within 3 microns of 500, uh, which is about the accuracy we would expect with a uh, micrometer and probe in a V-block and the linearity error that you would expect with a, with a digital AccuMeasure after it's been calibrated. Now, let's take a look at changing our range extension to 1. If we go back to our user settings page and we wanted to say get higher resolution, I could go and change this to times 1 which puts us back to 250 microns range for the probe. Now after we change this we have to remember to go and hit save changes so that it writes it into the digital lag measure. Now if we go back to probe setup I'm going to move the micrometer to a 100 microns. And you can see we're back down at 100 microns, or thereabouts within 2 microns. Right, we have a voltage that's uh, roughly proportional. And now if I move out to 250 microns, we should track that.
And now I'm showing 250 microns on the Metatoyo head, and we're seeing 247. We're in, within three microns of uh, 250 microns. So that shows how easy it is to change the range extension. Now, the one thing you can't see here <coughs> is what the noise level is. Uh, by dropping the range down by a factor of two, I've achieved twice as high resolution. So if you wanted to be reading down in the micron range or say several hundred nanometers of motion, that would have dropped the, the um, AC or peak-to-peak -peak noise that we would see on that signal. Next we're going to take a look at our strip chart recorder. So if I jump over to the strip chart tab, we'll do a couple of setups here. We can display their voltage or displacement. It's uh, infinitely more useful to look at displacement. So I've switched over here to millimeters. Uh, why don't we change that to microns. So I'm going to go over to settings here and I'm going to change displacement to microns. And once I hit OK, And let's see, we have displacement 1 and 2. I'm also going to shut off displacement for channel 1 because I don't have a probe hooked up. So you can see this changes to just channel 2 here. Now, if I start monitoring this, uh, this is going to act like an oscilloscope display. And as I change the displacement, you'll be able to see uh, proportional change here. So right now I'm sitting at 250 microns, and I'm going to run it into 100 microns. If we watch our vertical scale here. I'll try to carefully set 100 microns. And we're just down at about 100 microns here. Now, this is set for auto scaling. So if I don't do anything and I sit here, this is going to re auto scale once we run off on the right hand side of the screen. The idea here, though, is to give you a feeling for how the displacement strip chart works, and I'm just sitting here rocking the micrometer back and forth so we can see the motion. And not only can we plot this on the screen, uh, had I pressed the Start Logging button, they would write it into a CSV file that we could recover later, and you could plot this out in Excel um, and add it, your own annotations on it, do whatever you want to the graph. Okay, we're in strip chart mode here. I'm going into Settings. I'm setting 100 samples to acquire. And if we go back to, whoops, hit OK. We go back to uh, user settings. We see that we're sampling at 200 samples per second. So that's about a half second's worth of data that we'll be taking when we do a data capture here. So we can acquire the data. You can also save the data if you wish. Under settings here, we can see um, also that our display units are microns. So when I hit strip chart, we're only going to get about a half second recording. So I'm going to rock the micrometer back and forth, and we can see what happens. Whoops. Got hit. hit the right button here, which is acquire data. There we go. All right. So I was rocking the button, and you can uh, rocking the micrometer, and you can actually see the movement here. Um, let's try taking a longer number of samples so we get a little bit more time to rock that. I'm going to set this up for 500 samples. Hit OK. Once I hit acquire data it's going to start doing that. So again I'm going to rock the micrometer. See our samples being taken and there we go. 